Welcome everyone. In today's video, we will be talking about how to find CDL drivers for hire. In this particular video, I will be talking about CDL A drivers. Of course, there's different classes and you can learn about more of them on the internet. I will make a video in the future, but this video, I will be talking more so about CDLA because they are the ones that are the hardest to find. Now CDLA, the A class, there's different classes. Um, and A is the top most where you can, it's all divided by the gross vehicle weight, how much you can pull, right? So the big semis, to keep it in the very simple terms, uh, you need a CDLA driver's license to drive the big semi with the 53 foot trailer um, of any kind on it. So I'll be talking a lot about that in this video today. Now, the first thing I wanna start off with is that there is over 1.2 million trucking companies just in US alone, okay? Uh, and they're, the number in, in Canada is smaller, it's not, nothing close to as big as US, but, uh, but I'm gonna take US as like a study and a data point here because CDL is a term of US, not Canada. And the biggest thing that I, I'm gonna share some really uh, great stats with you that's just gonna boggle your mind. And they boggle my mind too when I came across them and I read and researched all about it. So there's 1.2 million trucking companies in US and there are over 3.5 million truck drivers. You know, like if you, these are not exact data, but these are very accurate data uh, according to, uh, you know, you can look up online on like the census and statistics of like American, US labor and whatnot. But the big thing that actually surprised me was, and this, I think this data point was like a couple years ago from ATA, where they mentioned like over 91% of the trucking companies that operate in US operate less than six trucks. So you can imagine how many trucking companies, 91% of 1.2 million, or let's say eight or 900,000 back one or two years ago, uh, majority of the trucking companies are smaller trucking businesses. They're small outfits with couple trucks, less than six trucks. And here's an even more interesting data, 92.8% I think is, have less than 20 trucks. So it gets even more uh, interesting that just 1% more and it's like you still have less than 20 trucks. So most trucking businesses that are registered in US are small trucking companies and we have 3.5 million truck drivers. So you can imagine most of these drivers um, are employed at smaller trucking businesses. You know what I mean? So you, under, you gotta understand the, the dynamics of this because once you understand these numbers, finding drivers can actually become easier for you. Okay, so if this trucking company can find a couple drivers, I can too. Especially with like a smaller trucking business, like if you're a smaller trucking company, it can be harder and talk to so many small guys and they're like, hey Ahmed, we're just starting out, we have a couple trucks or we are just looking for the first driver. Uh, do you think even it's possible? Like I'm having a, such a hard time. And I tell them these stats and I empower them that if all these 91% of trucking companies that operate in US, they have less than six trucks. If they can find drivers, you can find drivers. It's not impossible. Uh, so, you know, like inspiration from that small data set actually will help you understand that yes, you can find good drivers if you do the right things in the right sequence. There is a process, there is a method to it. And I'm gonna share all that with you today in this video. Now, the first thing that I wanna share with you guys is that Whenever you're looking for a truck driver, do not think of like, I need to fill this job. Think about who do I want in this job? You know, like if you employ any kind of drivers, I'm sure you wanna fill your open truck or you wanna hire a driver similar to your top driver or even a good driver like that does good run, uh, is not pain in the butt for you. Like, you know, like they, they work with you, they're good in communication, gets the loads on time and is, is a great person to work with. Um, and for the ones who just don't have any truck drivers yet, who are just starting out, that's the kind of person you wanna go after, like an experienced truck driver. An experienced truck driver will just change the game for you. I'm not saying like the new drivers are bad by any means, 
Uh, you know, there's a place, there's absolutely a place for them. They play, everybody started new, right? Like we, we weren't born truck drivers by any means. Uh, but when you're a smaller trucking business, uh, starting with an experienced driver is very, very important. And depending on what kind of trucking operations you run as a big trucking company, most of them that I come across, they want some kind of experience on the drivers. They may be like, well, we need at least six months. So at least they don't, they're not just hiring new guys and this 200,000 truck uh, goes into the ditch the next day. I'm not saying new drivers crash the trucks, but insurance companies are very, very strict about these policies. And trucking companies, they want to hire, they want to hire drivers. It's, it, they just want to be safe and comply to, to the regulations and the insurance and keep a profitable business. You can't really blame them of not hiring new drivers. And I see the frustration a lot with the new drivers as well. Now, coming to the meat and potatoes is Think about like when you're hiring, you need to find the drivers that are experienced and employed and whatnot. And I'll tell you why exactly. Um, I remember I used to be in my uh, planning job when I used to plan and like manage trucks. And um, what would happen is I, we bought some barley. I used to do it in like agriculture sites. So we did like grain hauling. And I remember I um, called this trucking company and we wanted to move some barley, barley from, um, Manitoba, like the province that I am in, into like a two provinces over into Alberta. And um, there are a lot of cattle farms there. So there's a lot of cattle uh, farms there to like feed the cattle. And we wanted to ship this barley and I called this trucking company and the, the guy, the driver, uh, not the driver, the dispatcher was actually an ex-driver. So I told him, I was like, hey, uh, whatever his name was, I can't remember. And I was like, hey, I really want to move these like 10 loads. Can you, can you help me with this? And he's like, okay, where is it getting picked up and where is it getting delivered? So I told him the two places and I was like, well, okay, so it's so-and-so miles, 300 miles or 500 miles or whatever it may be. And by the ton, this is what I'm thinking I want to pay you. He's like, no, 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 Amrit, that's not the right thing. Actually, the farm itself is another 20 miles from what you're telling me. And we know, I see, I knew this, but I didn't really knew this. I was like, I, I, like when you Google these cattle farms, they will show like a rough location. There's no like a PO box direct number of a house. This is like a farm, right? So this, this, this barley or these loads are going to a farm. So he told me, he's like, there's another 20 miles to what you're saying. So there's more distance to be covered going in and then coming out because there's nothing that they can pick up immediately next to it. So there's a lot of deadhead miles and this is not the rate that he can accept. And I was like, how do you know this? And he's like, I used to be a driver and I used to haul in there. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. So that just tells me, and the, there's two lessons to take away from here. Experienced drivers will actually save you money. Imagine if there was a dispatcher who was just a dispatcher, didn't knew about this, and sent a driver down this journey, and the driver had to run like 40 miles, deadhead, uh, no pay, right? Like, as a driver, you only get paid when you're doing miles. How much would that cost? He, would be, he or she would be pissed off, right? So having those experienced guys just changes the game. Even when you're hiring like for an office dispatch position, hiring like an ex driver, an experienced good driver can really change the game for you. So you wanna go after like the experienced guys. I'm gonna tell you how uh, you can find them and whatnot. So those are the guys that are actually going to uh, make you money, save you on a, under, like costs that you can totally avoid and actually give you, you know experienced guys, like a lot of experienced guys, not all of them, they have some kind of mechanical experience sometime too. So they can really like fix and truck, get the truck going, uh, limp the truck to, uh, to a closed city or something if the truck breaks down. I've seen it in numerous, numerous examples. Um, so the first way that I would put it is that the experienced guys are not looking for a job, okay? They're already happy in the job. That's the big game changer. That's the big shift you need to do in your mindset that when you're putting something on a job site, when you're starting to look for a driver on a job site, you're actually going and asking for a driver that is not happy or was fired, let go, or can't find a job, in most cases in the trucking industry. I'm not trying to stereotype, uh, but that's the reality of trucking. There is no reason a truck driver cannot have a job unless he or she doesn't, just doesn't want to do it. Okay, in most cases, there's exceptions where they're not happy or the trucking company was bad, I get it. But in, for the majority of the truck drivers, it's very easy to get a job. If you don't have a job, there's something wrong going on. I'm not saying all the drivers are bad, but I'm just telling you that's how it goes. So if you're looking for someone on job sites, in my personal opinion, 
uh, you're not going to find the top talent that you're looking for. It's just not going to happen. Uh, if you do find it, then that's good. I wish you all the best. That's a good thing to go. But I would not recommend, recommend starting from the job sites at all. You want to persuade or go after the guys who are actually employed at another trucking company who, I'm not saying steal them or anything, I'm saying like, I'll tell you uh, how, what's the right way to really have them come over to you. But those are the people that you want to go after because they're already in the zone, they're doing the job, they're going to keep your trucking company profitable. Imagine if you run into no accidents for so many years, how low your insurance rates will go. That will leave so much margin for you to increase profitability, give more pay to the driver, have a better trucking company, run your operations with less headache. You know, like th those are big frustrations when you're running a trucking business. So you want to go after the experienced guys. And here's the thing, you want to influence them to come to you because that's the ethical way. I'm not saying stealing drivers, I'm saying influencing that, hey, I have a better offer than what you're currently getting and I propose this, would you like to be a part of my trucking business? And I will provide you security. All of us need some sort of security that if you're moving to another job, we're getting a better pay, uh, be better choice, better options, and security. You know, every decision that we take in our life, we're, this is something from my mentors, and they said, we're moving away from pain, and we're gaining, or we're moving towards something more pleasurable. These are the only two ways, honestly. You're either you're moving away from pain, or you're moving towards more pleasure. So that's how you wanna portray your trucking business. And most, Trucking companies fail at this, and that's why you can't get drivers. It's nothing to do with, uh, it's nothing to do with truck or pay and whatnot. It's more so how you influence or pitch your offer to a potential driver. You need to master that art. Nobody's a driver's not gonna love you by having a low ad on on any job site and hey, hiring drivers in Kansas Kansas today like. It's not gonna happen. They're not gonna love you. They don't know anything about you. You're just offering a pay. You're just a piece of paper to them. They're driving a truck. They're driving for a legit trucking company. It's not gonna happen. So what I recommend is you wanna do like a video. And I'll tell you why you wanna do a video. And you don't need no professional camera, nothing like that. You wanna do a low video with your phone in your hand. And I preach this to some of the biggest trucking companies. Do not overcomplicate the process. Trust me. Just take your phone in your hand and record a little selfie video of yourself and be like, hey, if you are a driver in whatever city you're looking for, uh, I have something interesting for you. I am, tell about yourself, who you are as a trucking business. I always recommend the CEOs of the companies do this because you cannot fire a CEO. If you have a recruiter, if you have another safety guy, they may leave the company but you don't, you own the business. So if they get all this momentum going and they all of a sudden leave, and you're gonna be like, how am I gonna do this? So you should always start and become that camera friendly person, okay? And you're like, hey Amrit, I'm, I'm shy, I don't wanna be on camera, I don't believe this, and blah, 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 blah. Listen to this, TSN said that 87% of all video content, all the content that will be consumed will be through video in the upcoming years, in the next decade or so. So these things are mind boggling. Look at the time that you spend on social media. It's all videos. It's all videos that you're watching, right? Like look at YouTube, like all these things are like monstrous uh, platforms or just video jammed into it. It's the next level and it works in your favor. And why? Because it builds trust. Subconsciously, the driver, when they watch a CEO talk to you, that puts security in their heart, in their mind, that this is a legit trucking business. Think about spammers or anything like that. Do they put their faces out? No, they don't. Same thing goes for your trucking business. You wanna put your face out so people can really trust you, be, believe that this is a legit trucking business. If the owner is really talking, then I believe this guy. That's how the game goes. You know what I mean? So what you wanna do is you wanna record a simple, simple video, tell exactly where you're hiring, what you're offering, why they should come to you, a compelling offer, and do different kind of videos. Like it just doesn't have to be one video. And I hear all the time where it's like, oh, I really did this video and it failed. Well, it failed because you only did it once. You have to do so many to find that winning one. It, nobody was successful in their first shot. That just doesn't happen. So. The process is not like to do this. The process is to stick with it to make it successful. It will work for you. I've spent over a million dollars 
trying to perfect and do this video thing to find drivers and it works. It absolutely works. There's a way you need to persuade drivers and influence them. It absolutely works. So record a simple, simple video, put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube. I would recommend put it on Facebook. Everybody's on Facebook and just run a little bit of traffic, boost that low video on your Facebook page and show it to different drivers. So they can DM you, they can talk to you, you can talk to them and they like you, then you give them the application to come join your trucking business. This is the easiest, simplest way you can go by starting finding you guys. Now I can tell you 10 different more strategies. Go to Google and type these uh, magic words and do this and that, but that's not the point. The point is to keep it simple so it caters to everyone. This process will work whether you have one truck, whether you have 30 trucks, whether you have 200 trucks. Now there's going to be a little bit of tweaking and elements in it to make it stronger, make it better, and all that kind of stuff. And it will come over time. You don't have to master this all in this moment. It will come over time as you keep doing it, keep doing it, and keep doing it. Now, the other thing that I get a lot is uh, that spend, build, build a brand, okay? Build a brand and not just like a quick win because that's the last thing you wanna do. And, and I see this a lot with smaller trucking businesses or like trucking businesses with even like 100 trucks. They don't understand this, they don't do this, and this, is, this hurts them a lot on the long run. And what I call is like keep building your driver pool. Even if you're not hiring, even if your trucks are full, you should still be generating applications of drivers applying to you at any given time. All the time, you should always have drivers applying to you, collecting their info, their name, their email, their phone number, where do they live, how much experience they have. You should always be storing it into a CRM, a database, or anything. One of my mentors said, if you don't have a database, you don't have a data bank. You, don't, you, ain't, you ain't gonna make money if you're not building your list, uh, your driver pool, ever, okay? And I say this to every single trucking business that I work with, keep building your driver pool because that will help you a lot. What happens is usually six months or a year down the road when you need a driver, some new lane or freight position opens for you, you can send a mass email or mass text to this driver pool that you've been building and then all of a sudden you can easily scoop a driver instead of trying to put a fire in that moment. Okay, that video is not gonna get you a result right away. It's a little bit of a game but it gets way more powerful results, okay? So keep building your driver pool, build a brand. Don't be a fly-by trucking business. That's the last thing you wanna do. You're not gonna build a 10,000 truck fleet or those big fleets that you hear the name of um, by doing like that quick win kind of thing. You have to think a long-term approach. And it's a little bit of an identity shift too. It's not just like, um, you know, I do this and that's it. It will get you results, but for the long run, if, you, if you're here to stay and you, if you're here to do trucking, then you wanna invest in doing marketing and branding for yourself so people know the more awareness that you have, the better it is. Now for you, for all of you who are watching this video, um, I have a special gift since you're on this video and I wanna give you this for being part of my community, watching on my channel. There's something that I call the driver journey. Now I did this special training for some of the biggest trucking companies in North America, under showing them and making them understand that how a driver uh, moves from not knowing anything about your trucking business to bringing them and seating them into your truck, what are the steps involved, and then how do you turn this driver who's got a job at your trucking place into a raving fan? Okay, so there's a number of steps that you have to go through. These steps are absolutely must. There's no other way you can turn them into your hire a driver that's in your truck or into a raving fan who's gonna bring more drivers to you, right? Like the driver referral is a whole different world of things that also work for you. I'm not gonna go into that. That's a whole different piece of pie that I will touch on another video. But that's where you wanna be. All your drivers should be like your amazing fans who are pitching about your trucking business all the time. How to make them go there, how to put them to that point, this driver who doesn't even wanna to talk to you, who's like, just give me the load and I wanna run. How do you turn that guy into a raving fan who's gonna go at a truck stop and fight with another driver and say, the trucking company that I work for is the best trucking company to work for. How do you turn that? So all that stuff, I show you step by step all these uh, steps that you have to go through and I call it the driver journey. From a driver not knowing anything about your trucking business to making him into a raving fan. So I've got that for you. Beneath the video, there's a link where you can go and pick that up. So anyway, so that, that knowledge is gonna give you tremendous insight on stuff that I can't just put it out there uh, because 
trucking companies paid a lot of money to <laughs> to make make me show them. Nobody talks about this. Nobody has done this. Nobody even knows about this. Uh, so I've done it for you. In beneath the video, there's a link to go pick it up. Awesome. So this was it for this video. Hope you got a ton of value. If you like this video, make sure you like and comment and let me know what you actually enjoyed of the video and what you would like me to even break down and tell you more. You know, that helps me create better content for understanding trucking businesses and what they really want to know from me. Okay, so make sure you comment and let me know the things that you want to learn more and I'll make sure that I reply to them personally, myself. Yes, I do check all the comments myself and subscribe to the channel. Uh, when you subscribe to the channel, every time you release a great video, it will come directly to you and make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you will get the notifications as well that, okay, there's a video out from Amrit. I need to go watch it on how to find drivers. Awesome, everyone. So this is Amrit signing off and I will see you next week.